Hold up. What is going on with Pokemon Sword and Shield right now? Why do we have so much data for the Crown Tundra with the Isle of Armor update? Either way, the data mine keeps on going deeper and things keep on getting crazier, so let's get into it. The Crown Tundra leak we've been waiting for confirms at least 898 Pokemon, which means two new Pokemon we know nothing about. For those of you who have been keeping score with the recent data mining, 894, 895 are unconfirmed, but almost certainly the new Regis, and then 896, codename Hakuba, 897, codename Kokuba, and then we have 898, Calyrex. Here's the interesting thing, we were already getting close to figuring this out, we just didn't know if the information was in the Isle of Armor. Turns out it is. Classic. Space is currently reserved for three Pokemon slots in Crown Tundra. We already know about Regilecki, Regidrago, Calyrex, but there's also two extra slots still reserved as a gap since 1.0. The gap has been filled. And the gap has been filled in an insane way because 896, 897 can combine with Calyrex in some kind of way because we have Hakuron and Kokuron to go with the Kuron for Calyrex. I was not expecting this, but it does make sense. Like, it, it doesn't make sense like, oh, of course we could have predicted that Calyrex was going to get new forms. But the thing is, where's the Calyrex information, guys? The last trailer just gave us everything else about the new Pokemon, even though it's like, Isle of Armor wasn't out. It was an Isle of Armor, like, trailer, but it also did a lot of Crown Tundra information. We got to find out about Regilecki, Regidrago... Galarian Articuno, Galarian Zapdos, Galarian Moltres, their signature moves, abilities, like, they have pages now. And there's a lot of information on these pages, even though the DLC is still months away. We have brand new abilities, new gameplay, signature moves, but when you go to Calyrex's page, even though its head is the logo for the Crown Tundra, and it was revealed with the announcement of the DLC, still got nothing. It's a noble leader. This Pokemon ruled all of Galar in ancient times. Though it appears delicate and slight, its every move is filled with grace and dignity. Also has extremely high intelligence, nah, I couldn't tell with a big brain, and is said to see every past, present, and future event. So, that's OP, but we've known about this pretty much the entire time. However, this is where it makes sense, because we can just get a Calyrex trailer that gives us more details about it and potentially reveals the two new Pokemon or teases the fusion, and then maybe we get another future trailer that full-on shows the fusion, because this is so weird. There was like no information about Pokemon Sword and Shield leading up to the game's launch, but now it appears that everything has been known or like revealed about the DLC going into the DLC. Because we had the data mine for the Isle of Armor coming from Pokemon Home way back when, and when that happened it's like, oh, maybe there's still going to be like new Pokemon patched in. Nope, we pretty much knew everything about the Isle of Armor except for the gameplay, and now it seems we're finding out everything about the Crown Tundra except for the core gameplay. Like the raids and getting legendary Pokemon, that's still going to be hype. There's still, still going to be tons of things, like the Isle of Armor had many more features than anyone expected. But it looks like new Pokemon wise, we're not really going to be getting too many of them. However, I like the idea of this fusion. Normally I think like the fusions are stupid. I thought it was stupid with like Pokemon Sun and Moon. I thought it was stupid with Pokemon Black and White. But I think Calyrex's design is stupid. I like this. Like give it a different head and that's pretty cool. Like anything like from here down, I'm okay with. I can even take the noodle legs. I mean it's a cool looking deer Pokemon. But if it, like, fuses into something that salvages the big brain, just poor design, I'm happy with it. And then that gives us, like, some other things that could go on. Is there's going to be, like, a Xerneas-looking true king of Galar form? Are we going to have Primal Reversion come back into play? Not necessarily, like, as a Mega, but some kind of fusion that actually has, like, that Primal, like, true ancestral power of this Pokemon. So it's like, yeah, how did this little noodle do, like, rule Galar? That doesn't make any sense. Also, the Crown Tundra, there's a little bit extra going on here that more represents the crown of its head growth thing. Maybe this blossoms into a giant flower because it is a psychic grass Pokemon. So the fusions could be really cool and also means that there's not just like purely alternative forms of Calyrex. It's tied in with two new Pokemon and the details keep on going. For clarity, these are code names. Codename system refers to Zacian Zamasenta as Ukami K and Ukami T, Turnus as Zyuka, and then all of these other ones we have AMA1 and then Urshifu Styles, AMA2 Mizu, AMA2 Aku. And we've seen this for like 
how Pokemon are coded. So AMA1, well, that's just going to be base form. And if we see the two here, that's an evolution underscore alternative form. Yeah, this is, again, this is the system. We know about this. So that's why we can tell that these are different. And then the system kind of goes into the alternative forms for Calyrex or with like a combination. And I like that. So I think it can make Calyrex's design really, really cool. And there's still more to talk about, guys. There's, there's still even more to talk about. Why is that in the Isle of Armor? What? Models? Characters? Where, wait, where's the models for the new Pokemon? What is going on? Some Crown Tundra models left over in DLC 1. Lol. Yeah, that, I mean, that isn't, like, laughing at this isn't my reaction. My reaction is, what? What? Wait, what? So we have the Villager Chief. We have Adventurer Male, Peony. Adventurer F, Peony's daughter. Seems likely. That seems like the, the case that's going on right here. So it's kind of the same classifications. And then we have Old Male, Old Female. Probably just regular NPCs. Funnily enough... Old 2 male is just the villager chief without any glasses. Yeah, that's what it looks like, but why do we have models for the Crown Tundra? Like, I thought it was just going to be some loose data, some guesses. Nah, we got everything. But let's keep on going, guys. Looks like Game Freak prematurely added both returning and brand new items in their internal item arrays with DLC 1. Nice. Current max item ID is the Mark Charm. We see it goes as high as 1606. 17 new items. Items in question are included in the attached screenshot. So we just have like some key items. Like that's a lot of key items. So these seem like they're going to be items that probably interact with the new features. Unlock the legendary Pokemon. We have these expeditions that are coming through. So a legendary tree of a legendary three. Like this is going to be the chapters. And that's how the Crown Tundra is going to be split up. So you have the Titans. Makes sense for the Regis and the new Regis. And then some kind of Regigigas event. Ultra Beast. And then now this gets a little extra spicy. Why are we going to have a Swords of Justice chapter? when the Swords of Justice are already available through Pokemon Sword and Shield? Like, those are the only playable trio legendaries. And so... so and I, what? Yeah, what? So, yeah, you have to transfer them to get them, and then they're actually going to have something to do with it, and I guess they're going to be capturable as well. And then there's still just the legendary raid system that's going to be happening with the Crown Tundra. So, a lot of stuff. That's where I feel like we have, you know, these, these item listings are going to be, like, key items either that represent unlocking that. There's also like memos or something coming from the other long list of data mines that I've, or data mine information that I covered in my last video. And then we have placements for the Pokemon that we already know about. So if a Pokemon is in the Isle of Armor or Pokemon Sword and Shield decks, it's got, like, it, it, I don't even know how to describe this. So we already know about the areas in the Crown Tundra in the wild area and depending on the weather, we can see the Pokemon that are in it. However, we can see with something like Raining, all of the Pokemon found in Rain in this area of the Crown Tundra from the data mine are going to be new to the decks. So, like, more returning Pokemon in that way. Game Freak didn't remove the location info for the Crown Tundra from their encounter tables. I mean, all of the shenanigans just keep on going on. And then there was all of this data for the events and the areas. The Isle of Armor has 17 zones. The game knows about on the map. Crown Tundra also has 17 zones. However, the Crown Tundra looks a lot larger than the Isle of Armor. So, I mean, Isle of Armor, kind of like top centerish right. But then we can see all these little boxes at the bottom below the Galar map. Crown Tundra is pretty big, despite having the same amount of zones. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. But that's another good thing. Like, if you're enjoying the exploration in the Isle of Armor, Crown Tundra is just going to be better. It's also not going to be as much water. Like, the Crown Tundra, or not Crown Tundra, the Isle of Armor feels kind of... Actually, not even... The Isle itself feels pretty big. And then there's also, like, double the mass in the water, but water exploration isn't as fun. We all know about this because of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, at least the Generation 3 games. So yeah, there's still a lot going on with how promising the game is going to be. I think what maybe Game Freak is trying to do here is show that they don't want to make it to where every in-between game is just going to be a vomit of new Pokemon. And they kind of established that in Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, they're only making it legendary Pokemon or special story Pokemon. And it seems that they're doing the same here with the 
uh, DLC. DLC could have given us like 10, 20 new Generation 8 Pokemon. That would have been awesome. That's like everyone's best case scenario that they want, but it seems that Game Freak doesn't really want to go through with this. They just want to add new Pokemon that are either a couple of regional variants, if there's any more to be added in the Crown Tundra, or they're just going to save that for new generations, potentially different kinds of new games. Like Diamond Pearl remakes might just be the Gen 8 Dex expansion, more regional forms, or evolutions of existing Pokemon, calling back to what they did in Generation 4, instead of dropping like 30 new Pokemon between the Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra. A lot of weird stuff going on. And also, don't give up hope. Mythicals can be added later, would take up new spots. One more Mythical, 899. Does Game Freak just kind of like cheeky it right before the 900? Do they end at 900 with two new Mythicals? Or is just this just everything? Now, I do have a theory as to why they're leaving this in, and it might be substantiated by like just how programming works, that if the Crown Tundra and Isle of Armor are being developed in tandem or you know the olive armor was worked on first but as the olive armor was finishing up they were working on the crown tundra it's probably not a good idea to just rip out data for the crown tundra if it was developed with the isle of armor i guess since they did scrub some of the other things with the olive armor and the crown tundra that we couldn't like immediately get from the data mine like they're capable of it but it's probably just safer to not do that stuff especially for like the indexes and the items and all things that are already working nicely together but it does leave a lot of room for new stuff and since there aren't map specific things we don't have like the full raids list we don't know how those mechanics are going to work so not everything is spoiled and again that doesn't mean there aren't going to be new features added in even with the isle of armor data mine and all the information we knew going into it no one could have predicted honey and the super awesome gameplay quality of life that came with that and other things in the Isle of Armor. Max, well, we knew about Max Mushrooms, but we didn't know about how the feature interacted, and getting Max Mushrooms is actually pretty cool. So, anything little like that, from the new items, more items being added in, more development on top of what's already here for the Isle of Armor, because, I mean, if you think about it, Isle of Armor update, it's not like they finished it and then released it. it it's already been finished for a while, so we're still looking at, like, Beta Crown Tundra, to a degree, and then more can be added in on top of it as everything is just kind of kept in the index to not break the Isle of Armor or Crown Tundra as people get their DLC. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.